Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to come here because uh, it's a pleasure for me to see young people and to know that they are interested in World War II. I've seen your projects, I've seen the pictures that you've drawn and the, uh, the poems that you've written about this uh, celebration of uh, the end of World War I in 1918, that was the beginning of this celebration, Remembrance Day. And since World War II, which was joined as well, it's in memory of all the people that fought and were maybe killed or wounded during World War I and then World War II. And since World War II, unfortunately, in some of your countries, I heard Croatia, one of the girls is from Croatia, that there were many wars, the Malvins of wars in uh, uh, Iraq, uh, etc. So that now this uh, celebration, well, it's a, a Remembrance Day, it's not a big celebration because we're thinking of the people that died mostly, that gave their lives for freedom, that gave their lives that your parents are here, Liv, you are alive today. It's thanks to the people that fought in the, those wars that you still are happy and free, let's say. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I was born, I'm British, as you know, you've heard. I was born in a seaside town quite near London, 40 miles from uh, London. This is called the Mouth of the River Thames. On the Poslovensky Usti, Temže, eh? To stay popular, Usti. Usti je kad konci rieka a ide k mori, eh? It's the end of a long river, or the River Thames you've all heard about, and where it comes out to the sea, and that is called the mouth of the river. So that is where I was uh, born, in the River Thames, practically. In 1939, I was a schoolgirl, like you just a young girl of 12, and I was evacuated. Now, during your lessons, I think about World War II, you've learnt about the evacuation. That meant that all young people, or families, a mother with children, they were evacuated from the part near London and round the coast of the British Isles to the east coast. We were evacuated to inside the country or to the west side of the Great Britain or to Scotland there. So that we were taken into other people's homes or I was lucky I had grandparents in Scotland and so I went to stay with my grandparents and shortly after one term at a Scottish school I was sent to a boarding school. You know what is a boarding school? Yeah. Where you sleep and eat and uh, there were only girls there. You're lucky you've got boys and girls. Hope you don't fight together. No, are you all friends? <laughs> or are you sometimes fighting? Or squabbling, maybe? <laughs> yeah, well, that's healthy. If it's not wild, then it's healthy, isn't it? Yeah, that's part of life there. So in 90, I was at this boarding school and my favorite occupation was sports. I loved sports, and the wee girls, we played cricket, played netball, we played, uh, we could go riding or swimming, it depended, uh, what you, but my favourite sport was hockey, yes, ground hockey, pozemne hockey, I liked that very much, and tennis, of course. In 1943, I did my uh, school leaving exams, my uh, levels, hey, and then I became a student of pharmacy. You know what is pharmacy? Yes. yes, you've heard of that. I wanted to be a nurse, so I joined the Red Cross. In 1943, I was a young girl of 16. So I became a, a nurse at the hospital, but only on Saturdays and Sundays, because I was a voluntary nurse. I wasn't a nurse that was every day in the hospital. I was studying pharmacy. And every Saturday and Sunday, I would go for four to eight hours to the hospital. And on many occasions, we had people that had been bombed and injured during the bombing in Great Britain, in that area where I lived. And then we had people like German pilots that had been shot down 
mostly been shot down into the River Thames or onto land. And if they were wounded, the British people took them to a hospital. If there was a military hospital, then they went to a military hospital, but everywhere weren't military hospitals. And they went to the normal general hospital in the area where they had been found or been shot down. So that I helped these people particularly, as I mentioned, the uh, German airmen that had been shot down and wounded, by writing Red Cross postcards that went to Switzerland, because Switzerland is the base of the Red Cross. You know, the Swiss flag is a white cross on a red background, and the Red Cross is the reverse of the Swiss cross, yes? It's a white background, with the Red Cross uh, on it. So all the uh, letters are saying that people have been found or wounded that were uh, alike enemies to Great Britain. Their uh, letter or postcard, uh, many of many I've written, went to Switzerland, and from Switzerland it went to their home uh, countries, wherever they came from, even from Czechoslovakia. Uh, some people got uh, Red Cross letters or postcards. It was usually a postcard. And in particular, I remember one young pilot, and he didn't want to speak English. And I didn't want to speak German. In fact, I didn't know much German. <laughs> A little French I had at school, but uh, German uh, not. And he wouldn't tell me his name. He wouldn't tell me anything about him. And I told him, look, if you don't tell me your parents or your brothers and sisters, they won't know that you're alive that you're out of the war now, you can relax and you'll be a prisoner of war. Go to a camp when you recover. And eventually, the doctors were very happy because I was able then to communicate with him. And he did speak English, but he didn't want to speak English. He was afraid he'll give information away that would affect his uh, fellow pilots or uh, airmen back in uh, Germany that he'd given information to the British. But we told him, no, we need to have your information so that we can help you. And he was satisfied in the end. Now, maybe it was because I was a young girl and uh, maybe quite pretty, and that I managed to persuade him. He was young as well, about 20, so <laughs> that was good. Another thing I want to tell you, during the war, the role that women played in uh, the war. Now we had the land army, where women that had been maybe living or brought up on farms, they became members of the land army. Now what was the land army? They were uh, women that were helping the farmers to uh, grow crops and to help the aid for the war because Britain had to be more or less independent. Uh, the things weren't coming to Britain by boat, not very many. From America, sometimes we got uh, some meat or something like that from there. But Britain was almost independent, growing its own food during the war, because everything was rationed. You've heard about rations. I think you've done a project, something with ration books and something like that. It's Pridel, po Slovensky, Pridel that everything, you could have so many rolls a day, maybe two only. You could only have a week uh, ten decas of chocolate or sweets. You, you weren't allowed, you couldn't buy as much as you wanted then. And even fruit was uh, scarce apart from apples. Oranges, bananas, grapes in Britain, uh, they didn't grow. So that, uh, that wasn't easy to obtain very much. So we know now that there were women in the land army. Then there were girls that were driving buses, or women <coughs> driving buses and trams, so that the men could go to the army or to the air force or to the navy. You know Great Britain is famous for its navy. Britannia rules the waves, which is the sea, the waves. You've heard of that, haven't you? There's a, a famous song as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? Then we know that uh, not only were the trams and the buses driven by uh, women and tractors, as I mentioned, in the land army, but we had the women's army, the ATS, the Auxiliary Territorial Army. Now, I have a paper here. You'll read a little bit something about it. My older uh, sister was in the army. 
She was a driver in the army and she also did the mechanical school to learn the components of the lorries and the jeeps and the different things because she had to repair it, not only drive, but she was repairing the things. Now maybe you've heard that our queen, when she was Princess Elizabeth during the war, she's a year older than I am, she also joined the army and she also did this Remy a course, which was to learn uh, the components and how to repair a car, change a wheel, etc. And she uh, did this as well, and she was also driving. Maybe General Petrak told you that he met her. She came to an army camp, and she was driving the Nafi van, which is a van uh, going round the camps, uh, giving the soldiers tea or some cigarettes, selling cigarettes or uh, um, a roll or a gemle or something like that. And that's what uh, the princess, uh, Princess Elizabeth did. Princess that's Margaret was younger. People in my class, if you remember, there was a newspaper about Twitter Terrain out of Norway. Do you remember the picture of the newspaper? Yes. There was a picture that says, left hand down a bit, Your Highness. <laughs> She decided that she was going to drive big lorries and big tanks, and she was under the car as well. And yes, and repairing. She did her part. That, that is uh, true. Then, as a matter of fact, in all the royal family, you had uh, members of the royal family, the men, hey, the king's uh, brothers, the king's cousins and nephews. The, many of them took part in the air force. Even uh, the king's younger brother was killed on a flying accident in uh, Britain. So I'll uh, continue about the women. My younger sister, well, it's uh, actually I'm the youngest, but the one between me and my older sister who was in the army. I had another sister, she lives in Holland, and she was in the Women's Air Force. Now, she wasn't flying, of course, she wasn't a pilot or something, but she was very clever at codes, know what our codes, don't you? And cipher. To cipher something is to translate the da 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 that was coming. There were mobiles in those days, or uh, like today we have uh, the, website, uh, the website and uh, uh, computers. In, during British war, uh, the war, the World War II, there was no such thing. Was everything done by this Morse coding? Da 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 attack dali, hey? You know, SOS. Is that three, three dots and three uh, strokes, etc. So that my sister knew that, and also she knew shorthand, which is kratos stenographia. Hey, when someone's dictating a letter or something to you, she just makes signs like newspaper reporters. They are not writing the, everything I would be saying, but they're just making uh, uh, notes of marks. Yes, uh, this is called um, shorthand there. And they can read it, I can't. <laughs> anyway, my sister had been at school and that she'd studied, and so in the Air Force, this was very good because before the pilots ran for their planes, if it was a bomber or a, a fighter, they had um, in, not an interview, but they were instructed, yes, you're going over Holland or you're going over France, and you've got this to be bombed, or you've got to uh, accompany the bombing planes, the Hurricanes or the Spitfires, went out to aid or shoot off enemy planes so that the bombing planes could go in and destroy certain projects. And she was the last person, with an officer, of course, she wasn't an officer, to give instructions to these pilots before they left for bombing missions. Or when they returned, they would tell her who is missing. Yes, only from the left side wing, somebody's missing, or they would say their name or the number of the plane. We saw that plane being shot down, falling into the sea, or onto the land and burning, and uh, possibly the crew wasn't able to parachute out, and uh, they are killed. So this was reported. My sister made the reports, and uh, that was passed on to uh, higher commands or uh, to higher officers there. So I've mentioned to you, but also there were women who were in the Navy. Now, these uh, women that were in the Royal Navy on the seas, on boats, they were really usually doctors or nurses. They weren't just sailors. 
The other women that were in the Navy were on the land in headquarters giving instructions to the boats or receiving messages uh, from uh, people going to sea, etc. So women played a very important part in the war. They took the place of men, they were attractive, they were a nice company for the men when they uh, had a little free time, uh, they were uh, friends together, going to the cinema or going dancing or uh, visiting some villages or towns near the airports. So that is also they had a social life together. So I don't know. Have you any questions? Who would like to ask me something? I'll have a little drink of this very nice cup of tea. Okay, who's got a question then? Yes, Pierre. Did, did she go to many countries? Or did she, did she stay in... You ask Elsa. I stayed in Britain, and I'll tell you why. At the age of 16, I learned to drive. In Great Britain, you were allowed to drive a car or something, but you had to have somebody who was a driver with you, just in case you did something wrong. So my mother was a driver, my mother was in the... In the army, also a driver, but she was a volunteer driver. She didn't get money, but she was driving some officers around, etc. And in my family, we are all very good uh, drivers, I can say. But my father, he was called a backseat driver. He always sat in the back of the car. Like, he was just in the back of the car. That's a backseat driver. You know what a backseat driver is? Who's been in the car with your dad and he's been sitting in the back and saying, Turn right here. Do that. Don't go too fast. Who's ever done that? We all know that, don't Well, we? that's yeah. a backseat driver. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Alex. I learned to drive. I was in the Red Cross, which was, you see a picture of me yeah. in the uniform here. I used to come here in uh, outside uniform, but uh, you now I don't wear it. When I was in the uniform, I met my husband. He was then a young officer in the Czechoslovak army. He was a parachutist like General Petr. General Petr commanded when they knew each other. Okay? And also he was to go to Scotland, but uh, some plans were changed and he was sent to the Soviet Union, to Russia. And he fought in Russia, and between Poland and Slovakia, the Dukla Pass in the Carpathians. And he was also a partisan in the Slovak Mountains. No fighting for his life and uh, things like that. I wanted to become an ambulance driver. And there was a possibility, I was then 17, getting 18 by this time, and I wanted to be an ambulance driver in the Red Cross and to go to France. Because in France, the second plane had started to free Europe. But my husband, who was then just my boyfriend, he told my mother, no, don't let Elsa Simon, go to France, it's dangerous and something can happen to her. She must stay in Britain, she can be in the Red Cross, she can do her studies, and I will return if I live, he told her. I will return back to Britain after the war and find her. And that's exactly what happened, and that's how I eventually got to Slovakia. I speak English and Slovak, yes. I knew French, but I've forgotten it. I didn't keep it up. I knew I French, haven't you? Yes, I'm sorry. People need to carry on. Is there anybody in Miss Mariana's
this. So this my husband. So there you can see. Because 
was I was a section leader. And that meant I was a group of people, and many younger people than I was, I was about 18, 19. And so that I was responsible that those people would come to their training, they'll take their examinations, that we went on uh, marches, the victory march, we dressed in our uniforms and went on the victory march, or if there were some things, some sports um, competitions or something, we went there to be on duty. Um, but I did things like that. I've seen hundreds of people coming, and that was uh, really very sad to see the wounded uh, coming back on the little boat. And the, the town that I lived in was a seaside town, I mentioned to it. But it was also, there was a fishing area. Maybe the gentleman will uh, know, Leon C. was famous for cockles and uh, other sea fish that's right uh, from the uh, sand. Uh, when the, when the tide goes out, then the, these fishermen, local fishermen, are going and collecting these cockles, you know, that are in the shells or shrimps or something like that. And during the DDD uh, uh, days, but also when France fell in 1940, these little fishing boats went over from where I lived, which was about... Uh, 60 miles across to France, not very far. They were going there and picking people up out of the sea. They couldn't get into the beaches, but they were taking people that were on rafts or on blown up um, little boats or something. And they brought and saved many, many uh, army, people in the army, and brought them back to where I uh, lived. And I've seen that, but I uh, wasn't working in the hospital in 1940, of course. I was Cool. Wait, take the little boy at the back because you asked a question. Um, I was just going to ask, what is, what is your happiest moment during the war? During the war? Victory. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that was wonderful because in the town where I live, there are three towns joined together. It's Leon Sea, then West Cliff on Sea, and South London Sea, which is a big shopping area. And, uh, also there. And at South London Sea, there is a very long pier going out into the water. And the pier is two kilometers long, which is, I don't know um, if you know what is a pier, follow me, it's a mole in Solvay, going out to the water. And it was a very uh, nice place. During the war, the Air Force or the Army were on it, or the Navy, and uh, civilians couldn't uh, go there. But there were many boats coming into this pier because they could be cockpit because the water was deep at the other end. And so there were American boats, there were British boats coming in. And all these sailors, they got leave because it was victory. And they were all coming into the towns and they were singing and dancing and chewing chewing gum, which we in Britain we didn't really know very much about chewing gum. And they were very happy and everyone was dancing in the streets and we made long chains of people, you know, dancing after each oh. other. We're going all around the streets and around the letter boxes and telephone keys going around and in the shops and there. And so that was a wonderful uh, day. But okay. many, many people went to London, to uh, the centre of London, to Fargo Square. You've seen possibly on the television pictures of that. Uh, hundreds of pictures showing you the people celebrating in Trafalgar Square, which in London is one of the biggest and most important squares with the column of Nelson on it. And opposite that is the mall going down to Buckingham Palace, which is a uh, famous uh, road, the mall. At the end of the mall is Queen Victoria's statue in Buckingham Palace. Yes, but no, 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 from you. Um, <laughs> uh, have you lived through when the Russians came in Slovakia? Yes, yes. Perhaps, perhaps we should let Elsa sit down and she can tell us about that. So let's keep our questions. So, I, I would just say quickly.
actually, if you want to have a look at this, I don't know the time, but if there's time. Yes, I think we have time. Let's some of these papers right. around. Right, shall I pass these around? Yes, you can pass them. These are all yes, papers. You can uh, okay. pass it. Okay, so I have now Ailsa's story, and on the back is her sister. Remember she said her sister, Moira? Went to Holland. So, will you perhaps share these maybe one between two or three? Right? You can just lean over. Okay, I can read that one. Uh, you can look at the chair. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, you can share the Okay. Boys, you can share the letters. You can have a look back there. Yes, you can do. Okay, you can have a look at that one. Do well. Uh, there so that we were taken into other people's homes or I was lucky I had grandparents in Scotland and so I went to stay with my grandparents and shortly after one term at the Scottish school I was sent to a boarding school you know what is a boarding school yeah. where you sleep and eat and uh, there were only girls there you're lucky you've got boys and girls hope you don't fight together no are you all friends <laughs> or are you sometimes fighting or squabbling, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, that's healthy. If it's not wild, then it's healthy, isn't it? Yeah, that's part of life there. So in 90, I was at this boarding school, and my favourite uncle that fought in the, those wars, that you still are happy and free, let's say. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I was born, I'm British, as you know, you've heard. I was born in a seaside town quite near London, 40 miles from uh, London. This is called the Mouth of the River Thames, on the Poslovansky Usti, Temzje. To stay pochule, Usti. Usti je ked konci rieka a idek mori. It's the end of a long river, or the River Thames you've all heard about, and where it comes out to the sea. And that is called the Mouth of the river, so that is where I was uh, born, in the River Thames, practically. In 1939, I was a schoolgirl, like you, just a young girl of 12, and I was evacuated. Now, during your lessons, I think about uh, World War II, you've learnt about the evacuation. That meant that all young people, or families, a mother with children, they were evacuated from the part near London and round the coast of the British Isles to the east coast. We were evacuated to inside the country or to the west side of the Great Britain or to Scotland. Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to come here because uh, it's a pleasure for me to see young people and to know that they are interested in World War II I've seen your projects, I've seen the pictures that you've drawn and the, uh, the poems that you've written about this uh, celebration of uh, the end of World War I in 1918. That was the beginning of this celebration, Remembrance Day. And since World War II, which was joined as well, it's in memory of all the people that fought and were maybe killed or wounded during World War I and then World War II. And since World War II, unfortunately, in some of your countries, I heard Croatia, one of the girls is from Croatia, that there were many wars, the Malvins of wars in uh, uh, Iraq, uh, etc. So that now this uh, celebration, well, it's um, uh, Remembrance Day, it's not a big celebration because we're thinking of the people that died mostly, that gave their lives for freedom, that gave their lives, that your parents are here, live, you are alive today. It's thanks to the people.